Good morning, Forest Lake Church family. I want to welcome you here wherever you may be, if you're camping or at home, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your kitchen or back porch. Hope that you're having a blessed Sabbath morning. I also want to extend to you greetings from Forest Lake Academy and Forest Lake Education Center. As you can imagine, we're, we're anxiously waiting for the start of school and continue to solicit your prayers. I want to thank uh, Pastor Patterson and the Forest Lake Church for giving me the opportunity to come back. We, we did this almost a year ago, and it was a little different. Behind me at that time was not the beautiful scenery you see here at the Forest Lake Church, but were the beautiful students from Fleece as they were playing, the orchestra, the band, the handbells, the choir, all of those groups. Um, we're in a different world. Who would have thought 11 months ago that this is where we would be at this point in time? Um, again, want to solicit your prayers as we continue to move forward. Wanted to give you an update, though. Uh, I love the idea of being able to come and, and talk to this group every year. You are actively involved at Forest Lake Education Center and at Forest Lake Academy as the, the predominant number of students come from those two schools. We've had a, a good start to the year last year with a new administrative team at Forest Lake Academy and some new administrators at, at Forest Lake Education Center. New teachers really had started off with a great year and the collaboration started off wonderfully. Um, both sets of administrators spent time getting to know each other. Teachers spent time collaborating. Uh, we were moving in a great place and then March hit. And I don't even have to tell you the rest of the story. I'm, I'm prayerful that you've uh, managed through just the, one of the most unique times in our history. Um, but we're moving forward. Wanted to let you know as a church family where both schools are. Both schools are offering a uh, in-class face-to-face option and a virtual option. School was pushed back to August 24 as we have a lot of uh, redesign of classrooms and technology and just training that teachers have to do to be ready for education in a unique world. Both schools are doing what is known as concurrent synchronized virtual school. It means that students in the, in the home and in the classroom will both do the same thing, whichever they may be, may be doing. And uh, that will be uh, an interesting journey for some of our students, parents, and teachers. And we, again, ask for your prayers for that. I think I may use the word prayers a hundred times today because that's really, you, you come to a place where you just realize you have to lay everything at the foot of the cross because we have no true answers. Also excited, though, about some things that continue to move forward here at, um, at the Forest Lake Church and Forest Lake Academy. So I'm going to point this direction because straight ahead of us here is a building known as Canyon Stone. And that building is being repurposed. It's being used for an innovation center uh, on the south side, if you're, if you're looking at it. And on the north side, we're working with the Forest Lake Church and Forest Lake Academy to create a space that the church and the young people and the church community as a whole can, uh, can really thrive in. Uh, Mark Reams came to me with the idea several months back. And as we began to, to talk it through, the more excited I got, the more excited he got and the church got. And we're just uh, we're looking forward to a wonderful partnership between our, our church and our school. What a unique concept, right? Just more ways that we can impact the young people here in this Central Florida community to serve Jesus. Um, before we jump into a, a quick thought today, let's, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Kind, gracious Heavenly Father, in, in this unique world, we just ask for your blessings today. Please uh, anoint these lips and may the words that come from my mouth be the words that come from, from your mouth. I'll, I'll uh, ask today that you forgive me if I, um, if I use the word pivot too many times. Um, and I apologize, I did not say amen to a prayer. Uh, so if those of you still bowing your heads at home, uh, I apologize for that. But uh, forgive me if I, use, if, if I try to avoid the words like flexible and fluid and pivot, that uh, those are words that have become part of our vocabulary and just I'm, I'm, I'm done because we use them way too much. I want to concentrate on something else a little different today. And, and that is how do we come out of this? You know, um, there's an old saying that says, it's not how you go into the storm, it's how you come out of the storm and what you do during that storm. And I want to spend a moment talking about legacy. What is it that, that we as a community, what is it that you as a church, what is it that is you as an individual, what do you want that legacy to, to be? What is a legacy? What do people think of us? What do people name for us? What do people relate to our position or our church or our community 
outside of that community. You know, a good example of legacy here in, in the two campuses is the name of our gymnasiums over at, at Fleece. The gym is named for Miriam Kittrell. Um, Miriam was a, a very forward-thinking principal who was here uh, about 25 so years ago. We have an interesting history. She left uh, Fleece to go be the superintendent of Kentucky 10 uh, up in Nashville, and I left Nashville being superintendent of Kentucky 10 to come to uh, Longwood to be the principal of Fleece. Uh, but the gym is named for her forever. That's a legacy for her. Over here on the Forest Lake Academy campus is also a legacy, a gym named for Rodney Fulbright. Coach Fulbright was a longtime coach, athletic director, PE teacher, uh, and still drives bus for Forest Lake Academy. And his name is forever remembered on a gymnasium and the impact that he had in this community. That's a legacy. What is it that you want your legacy to be? You've seen them, sports stadiums, Amway Center, uh, Sun Life Stadium, named for companies or people that uh, either gave money or to honor a legacy of something that they did that was powerful in that community. My prayer for your legacy today is to be a Tychicus. A Tychicus. Now, do me a favor. We have information at our fingertips constantly. Don't pull out your phone and Google Tychicus. Just be patient. Tychicus is mentioned five times in the Bible. He's mentioned in Acts 24. We are told that he is from Trophimus. In Titus 3.12, Paul tells us a group that, tells a group that Tychicus might be one person who will come to visit them. And in 2 Timothy 4.12, Paul tells Timothy that Tychicus has been sent back to Ephesus. That's rather basic and bland. Just a basic description of a man who's going to come to visit. He could be a messenger. He could be bringing them food. He could be picking up the tithes and offerings and returning them to the, the central location. Those are three texts about Tychicus. But we'll get back to Tychicus. What legacy do you want to leave behind? And what legacy do I want to leave behind? We're going to look at two Bible characters to determine how you set a, le a, a legacy. The first is found in Exodus 3, verses 1 to 4. You can turn with me there, or uh, it should be up on your screen now. It says in Exodus 3, verses 1 to 4, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, while the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see... God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. Let us think back to Moses here. <clears throat> Moses' life is neatly divided into 40 years. 40 years as a prince of Egypt, 40 years in the, in the, the wilderness with, uh, with Jethro's sheep, sheep, and 40 years with the children of Israel. The 40 years that he's been in the desert, he's been minding sheep. Now, if you've ever dealt with sheep, you know that's a pretty mindless job. It's, it's a lot of time with, we use expressions about, you know, sheep led and, and you know, you just wanted the sheep and you're like a, like a flock of sheep because sheep aren't the sharpest and brightest things in the world. And God used those sheep to prepare Moses to take the children of Israel out of, uh, out of Egypt. But think about Moses. 40 years in the wilderness, he had to pretty much blocked out everything around him, just concentrating on the sheep. Have you ever done that? Have you ever blocked everything? Have you ever driven down the same road to work day after day, and you ask someone in the car, when did they build that house over there? Like, that's been there for 20 years. It's been there since we've been here. You're like, really? I, I did it just the other day. I've driven up and down Westlake Brantley from when I went to school here to uh, working here between the two schools. And just two or three days ago, I'm driving down Westlake Brantley, and I see a house there, and I'm like, I've never seen that house before. Well, obviously I have. That house has been there probably for 50 years when I lived here back in the early 70s. I just never noticed it before. Why? Because as I'm driving back and forth between the two schools, or driving from my house uh, to school, my mind is somewhere else. I'm focused on something other than that house. That's not the most important thing for me. What if Moses' mind had been someplace else that day? What if he was thinking about something else? What if he was worried about the price of wool 
or he needed to get two new camels, or he forgot someone's birthday or an anniversary. What if that's where his mind was? What if he hadn't turned aside and seen the burning bush? Let's look back at the Bible test text. It says, Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. And when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside, God called. God called when Moses turned aside from the world's problems. God calls us to turn aside. We pass burning bushes every day. Maybe it's the person in line at the grocery store. Maybe it's the guy who works next door in the cubicle. Maybe it's the neighbor who waves but never says a word. Do you have one of those? I have a neighbor that waves to me every time they see me. We just don't talk. They just wave. Who is your burning bush and do you see them? And has God placed that burning bush in your path for such a time as this? During the middle of a pandemic, is there a burning bush that you can reach out to? We see a lot of people's characters during this time, don't we? You know what I'm talking about. You get that email get that email that says in there, if you swim backwards, you won't get sick. Swim backwards in your pool, and that's shown. And then the very next person emails you, studies show that by swimming backwards in your pool, you're more susceptible. And you're like, stop. I don't, I don't. You begin to see where people's minds are. And it becomes very divisive that if you believe one way, then you're this. And if you believe another way, then you're this. And you're foolish if you think this. And if you're foolish if you think that. But what if one of those, one of those people is a burning bush. What if they're reaching out to you because they need that extra prayer at this time? Who is your burning bush and do you see them? My dad gave me a, a great quote one time. He said that as a literature evangelist and as a minister of the gospel, that his greatest blessing in serving others was not always the blessing that he gave to them, but it was the blessing that he received. So step number one, Look for your burning bush. It's out there. The second Bible character that I, I want to bring up is the, is the story of Daniel. And not Daniel in the lion's den, or Daniel and the beast coming up, or Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar, but Daniel the very beginning. Daniel 1, 8 and 9 says this. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not define himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not define himself. It's fascinating to see what Daniel was willing to stand up for. Here he was in Babylon, potentially facing death. However, he was uncompromising in his belief of drinking wine and eating unclean meat. For some of us, that may seem like a, a, a pretty hard line in the sand to draw. But that's where Daniel drew his line. He had his vision of what God expected of him. He had his understanding. And the Bible says that he purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. That word purpose is fascinating. He purposed. He refused to compromise. Once Daniel purposed, God told him, tells us, now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love of the prince of the eunuchs. Daniel purposed and God acted. It's uncompromising. So we are called as teachers, as pastors, as lay people, but all are called to do something. There's a quote from Christ Object Lessons that says, every soul whom Christ has rescued is called to work in his name for the saving of the lost. What is your legacy? How will you come out of the storm? What will you be known for? My prayer for you is that you look and seek those burning bushes and that you purpose in your heart that when you find that thing that God wants you to do, you do it wholeheartedly like Daniel uncompromising. And if you do, maybe you and I can both be Tychicuses. Let's go back to Tychicus. Before he was a pretty bland person, maybe a messenger boy, maybe a delivery boy, maybe a pickup guy, sort of a 2,000-year-old Uber. But Paul goes on and tells us, Colossians 4, 7 states, all my affairs shall Tychicus de declare unto you who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. Let me read that again. A beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. Ephesians 6.21, Tychicus, our dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord's work, will give you all the news about me so that you may know how I'm getting along. Tychicus, dead for 
almost 2,000 years, but remembered to this day, immortalized in the Bible for being a faithful minister, a dear brother, and a servant in the Lord's work. What a legacy. What do people say about you? There's a problem down the road at another church. And that church asks for help from your church. And the pastor or the pastor say, we're going to send fill in your name. What is that church going to think? You know, when, um, when I was in academy, I worked uh, ground the first year. Grounds of Shenandoah Valley, a big campus, picked up trash certain times of the year, raked leaves, planted strawberries, baled hay. Usually we worked in pairs of two. And a lot of the guys who were on my team I'd gone to elementary school with, and I was excited we got to spend the day together talking and, and laughing. But there was always one guy, and I, I, I don't remember his name. He was only there for a short amount of time. But we'll call him B, because I remember his name starts with B, but I, I can't remember the name. But every day I would be like, please don't, don't have B with me. I just don't want B. Because no matter what you say, so he just came back from home leave. What'd you do? Oh, I, I uh, went, went swimming at the local pool. Oh, how many laps did you swim? I don't know, 20. Oh, I swam 40. Whatever you did, he was going to double it. If you said that your Mustang went 70 miles an hour, his went 140. If, if two girls asked you out for a date, four asked him out. Whatever it was. And, and so when you saw him coming, you were like, oh, no, I, I know what I'm going to get. What do people think whenever you're called upon? What is their first thought? Is it a Tychicus, a faithful minister, a dear brother, and a servant of the Lord? What is your legacy? As we come out of this time, what do you want to be remembered for? I go back to Micah 6, 8. He has shown thee, old, God, old man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. If you look for your burning bushes, and if you look to purpose in your heart, and you hold Micah 6, 8, we can all be Tychicuses, and that's going to be different for each one of us. For some of you, it may be setting up prayer partners. For some of you, it may be setting a legacy of helping. Maybe you want to help with the Canyon Stone Project. Maybe you want to help with a student going to Forest Lake Academy or Forest Lake Education Center. Maybe you want to help the Children's Ministry Center here. Maybe you want to help in the community. Maybe it involves time, money, effort, prayer. I don't know. I won't answer that for you. I try to answer it for me. What is it that God has called me to do to be remembered? When I am no longer part of this community, no longer walking on this earth, what will I be remembered for? What will you be remembered for? Let's set that legacy now. As we come out of this and we learn again one day to appreciate hugs and handshakes and conversations without masks on, as we learn to live in that world, let's strive, let's thrive, let's strive and thrive to be purposeful, to look for those burning bushes that God has placed in our path, and to be a Tychicus. Bow your heads with me again, please. Kind, gracious Father, Micah 6, 8 says it all, that we can seek after you. We can love to do justice. We can love to be merciful. We can walk humbly. We can set our legacies as a Tychicus. Please place in front of us those burning bushes. Help us to look for them. Help us to purpose in our heart that we want to serve you in whatever path that you put in front of us. As we come out of this time, help us to strive to be the people that you want us to be, to serve you in whatever manner that may be. Bless each one watching and those who were not able to watch today. In your holy and precious name, amen. My friends, be safe, be watchful, and may the Lord continue to bless you and your family.